presentation. Hi everybody, good afternoon. Uh, thank you to Google for inviting me down again today. Um, I'll take you through a little bit of, uh, of TiVo's overall uh, portfolio of solutions, but I, I also will hark into uh, the area of um, uh, specifically of, uh, of recommendations and specifically personalized recommendations as we go through. But we've, before we started with that, I wanted to kind of mention something that, uh, that Matthias mentioned at the top of the, uh, the discussion. Um, and I wanted to cover one thing off. TiVo are a, le a legacy DVR company. Um, and so for us to be standing here at an Android TV workshop talking to all you guys about the, the virtues and the benefits of Android TV. I wanted to make sure I understood where our heritage was. And so, um, and that was really driven by, quite honestly, a lot of people in this audience who, uh, and, and the, uh, the data on this screen is from a, a survey that was run earlier this year by, D, uh, uh, by DTVE. Um, you guys all told us that Android TV and specifically operated here was what you wanted to see. And on the right hand side, you can see exactly why that was. Um, you know, we know that you want access to content. You know, that's why we're all in this room. But the really interesting thing is that customizability comes up in that list very, very high as well. We know that you guys ha want and need access to customizability. Uh, and I think you saw from Pierre's slides that customizability really is uh, quite extensive throughout Android TV. And that was the bit that really, really pushed us over to Android TV in the, in the first place. And so TiVo looks at this from a, a portfolio perspective, I mentioned at the start as well. Um, TiVo's portfolio ultimately exists still of um, Linux-based set-top boxes, but we have a huge investment on Android TV at the moment as well. And that, that investment is ultimately utilizing both our uh, on-premise and our cloud backends. It's utilizing, uh, utilizing not just Android TV, but the, the wider, um, what we think of as our IPTV initiative internally, which is the part of the business that I run. What we marry that up with, however, is our best in breed when it comes to metadata, when it comes to search and recommendation, and when it comes to conversation. And so that's really key in making sure that you as the operator are, con are in control of as much of that experience as you need and want to be. And so we have a, a, a modular, flexible approach that depending on what you need and what you want, we can provide a solution that, that enables that. Um, we have a, a, a personalization solution that ultimately goes from basic all the way up to hyper-personalized, and I'll come on to that in a little bit. Um, but we have the ability to plug into a system. Uh, we, uh, Jackie talked about cloud-to-cloud uh, -cloud integration of the system, which we're already doing at the moment. Um, we have the ability to deploy over, over multiple different um, methods of delivery. Uh, and we, of course, can do you know, a, a cloud deployment or a, an on-premise deployment, giving you full control. If I come to specifically to uh, personalization, it's, it's worthwhile remembering why we're doing all of this. Uh, and having sat through a few of the sessions this, uh, this last couple of days, a couple of things have, have struck me, which is a lot of people are talking about doing unbundled services. A lot of people are talking about doing you know, fully aggregated services. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of people doing both ends of that spectrum and, and kind of wondering whether the opposite way around is, is maybe better. Um, as we look at the content offering that we have available, uh, the study that TiVo specifically did, we ran a study at the, at the start of this year called the TiVo Trends Report. And we found, uh, at least in the US, that OTT services subscribed to by uh, a single household has increased again. We're now at you know, up 26% from, from 2017 into kind of 2.75 services per household. That's over and above their pay TV service or their, uh, their, their other services on that 10-foot device. That's a huge amount of content that every single individual has access to. And what that really means is that people are starting to show the signs of content fatigue. You know, in one app, don't find anything, come back, back out the app. You know, all of that kind of stuff, it, it, it's frustrating for the end user. And because of that, they're, they're starting to get less, interest in, 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 less interested in those a la carte channel packaging options. Now, what we did find that was really, really interesting was 
marry that up with a great user experience and personalized recommendations, and that uh, we find a significant increase uh, on their, their, their satisfaction of that service. And so that's really driving us to kind of double down on our, on our personalization story. And so what I'm presenting you here um, is the TiVo user experience in, in two, or three, uh, two or three parts. Um, but the key in this is that this is the same user experience over, over the entirety of, uh, of the options that I previously talked about. It's the same UX. Depending on uh, which option you go for and how much control over the personalization experience you would like, that changes what you see in these, in these specific strips of content. So we can absolutely use the, the, the Google-provided um, APIs, whether it's the channels API or learning what's on in other apps. We can absolutely leverage that inside the custom launcher experience or the, uh, the unmanaged uh, kind of more bring your own device experience that we provide. We have both options. But if you guys want more control and you, you see the need to make sure that not only are you do, doing fully personalized information, uh, uh, sorry, fully personalized or predictive recommendations, and they are two different things, uh, that you get that control if you'd like it. Not only that, you get the analytics and the insightful information behind that to understand exactly why it's happening. And lastly, you really get the control so that if you would like to make sure that something that you have uh, made sure is on the platform and, and lovingly bought into your, your overall platform, that curation and recommendation are not polar opposites. We have the ability, using this technology, to, to blend those as you need to. And so not only are they hyper-targeted to the end consumer, that user is more likely to click them because you've obviously curated that piece of content, but we're not just marketing, marketing it to everybody. We're marketing it, marketing it, marketing it, pardon me, to a very specific person. And that drives huge amounts of engagement. And that's really shown out by the, the, the uh, again, the same study where we see, um, you know, personalized recommendations outperforming actually hand curated recommendations. We see overall engagement increase by 35% with this. And the one that I really like out of all of this, because I, I know for a fact that all of us have potentially hundreds of channels in the room. Um, I live in the US and it's like five, 600 channels is crazy. Um, but that amount of content is really hard to navigate for an end consumer. And the value of increasing number of channels watched by 25% means you're showing your users exactly what content you have in your catalog. So with that, I wanted to kind of wrap up. Um, but uh, if, if, you, uh, if you'd like to talk to us more, feel free, and I'm happy to answer questions later on as well. Thank you.